Hallelujah. Well, the person who wants the largest breakthrough here tonight. Shout the loudest hallelujah. Let's close our eyes as we raise our two hands to the Lord and pray for ourselves in this song. To join to see if you're yeah, my humble cry. While on earth as thou art born, only do not pass me. Savior, 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 my own. Hallelujah, of all as thou art holy, do not pass me. Savior, 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 only do not pass me by on our love. It's a great hope. Hallelujah. Great hope. Was 
Righteousness, but by His grace alone. It's not by works of righteousness, but by His grace alone. It's not by works of righteousness, but by His grace alone. Oh, I'm complete. Oh, yes, complete. Oh, yes, complete. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, oh, yes, complete. Hallelujah, I am complete. Send that fire. That holy boat. Send the fire. Send the fire again. That holy ghost fire. Send the fire. Send the fire. Send the fire, send the fire again. The only God, fire burning in my soul. Holy Ghost and fire, Holy Ghost and fire. Thank you, cause the fire, fire burning in my, fire burning in my soul. Fire burning in my soul. Only go some fire, hey, just a fire, hey. Fire burning in my soul. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Hallelujah, is that anything? Oh, yes, is that anything to have for? Hallelujah, is that anything, anything, anything to have for the Is that anything, is that anything to have for Yes, be all, be all. I am the, I am the Lord, I am the Lord of all. 
Hallelujah, is that anything? Is that anything to have for? Hallelujah, is that anything, anything, anything to have for you? Is that anything? Is that anything? To have John, the fullness of a golden bodily dwelleth in the Lord. The, the fullness of a golden bodily dwelleth in the Lord. The fullness of a golden bodily dwelleth in the Lord. Oh, I am complete. Oh, yes, complete. Huh? Hallelujah. Huh? Hallelujah. Raise up your right hand to the heavenly, beloved, as we declare this loud and clear. Every power creeping against me. Can you say that loud and clear? You are a liar. In the name of Jesus. Every power creeping. Creeping against me. Let the powers be destroyed. By the power in the blood of Jesus. In Jesus name we pray. Declare this loud and clear mention in your name. I, Daniel Olukoya shall not be a spiritual casualty. Can you say it loud and clear? Ah! In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and declare it. I shall not be a spiritual casualty. But support attend the care. Ribo support the care about. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Now with a voice louder than anybody around you, say every biting demon be silenced. Can I hear you shouting it at the top of your... In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. Jesus name we pray. Father, we thank you for a wonderful evening before you. And we thank you for sparing our lives to see this day. Thank you because you are the owner of our soul. You are the owner of our lives. Accept our thanks in Jesus name. This evening, lay your hands upon us. Open our understanding. Anything in any life that the enemy wants to use as a ladder to climb into anyone's life, let those ladders be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Anything in our lives that has been given the enemy access in the past. For we know that for the enemy to come against us and to succeed, there must be a ladder. Every ladder, every access point, Every point of contact through which the enemy is boasting against us and getting entrance. Father, let your power eliminate them in the name of Jesus. Open our understanding tonight. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In louder, amen.
Let's have a seat. God bless you. Tonight, we're looking at what I call the strange power of iniquity. The strange power of iniquity. And you do well to listen very carefully. This year is going to a close. In a few days' time, another year will start. The devil worked really, really hard on so many people this year. And has succeeded in cheating so many people. It is important we pray and prepare ourselves for what is coming ahead. The strange power of iniquity. In Psalm number 51, verse 15, somebody in this program today will receive the oil that you have lost. In Psalm 51, verse 5, Psalm 51, verse 5, it says, Behold, I was shaping in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, he says, I was shaping in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. You have to listen very, very well here tonight to what we're going to say here for these very few minutes we're going to speak. No one has to teach a young child how to tell lies. No one has to teach a young child how to manipulate. Young children pick up evil things faster than good ones. A man gave his son very serious beating because he caught the boy smoking the pieces of mat as cigarette. The man beating up his child is a chain smoker. What he did not realize is that he had transferred the throne of iniquity to that child. In Second Thessalonians chapter two, Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse seven. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse seven. The Bible says this: "For the mystery of iniquity doth already work; only he who now let it will let." Until he be taken out of the way. There is a mystery of iniquity at work already. But there is something restraining it. Which is the Holy Spirit. A time will come. When the trumpet shall sound. And all the believers who have the Holy Spirit in them will be withdrawn. And once there is that massive withdrawal. Hell will be let loose on the surface of the earth. Then that mystery of iniquity that is working, 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 but has been restrained by the Holy Spirit will now be let loose. I'm praying that at that time it will not be left behind here. (laughs) Sin is an individual act of disobeying God. Sin is an individual act of disobeying the Almighty. And there are two kinds of sins. There is the sin of omission and the sin of commission. The sin of omission is when God asks you to do something and you don't do it. That is the sin of omission. The sin of commission is when God says you should not do something. And you do it anyway. Those are the two branches of sin. The sin of omission. God asks you to do something. You don't do it. The sin of commission. God says, don't do something. And you are doing it. But iniquity is a stronger word. Iniquity means perversion. That is a bent, a leaning towards sin. You have this agenda in your life that is bending towards sin. The New Testament word translated iniquity means to exist without law. And iniquity 
It's a sin that is committed over and over and over and over again. You do it, you ask for forgiveness. You do it, you ask for forgiveness. It has, it has graduated beyond sin. It has become iniquity. It has become iniquity. A woman gave me a call and she was crying bitterly on the phone. She said, man of God, pray for me so that God will not kill me. I said, kill you? Why? He said, well, I, I'm a contractor. I promised God I will not sell my body to get contract again. And I told God that if I, if I sell my body to get contract, it should kill me. He said, sir, I've just finished one now. Pray that God should not kill me. I said, was I there when you gave the promise to God that it should kill you? The fact that somebody could say God should kill her. And the person said, went back to that sin. That's what we call iniquity. In some lives, their iniquity is drunkenness. No matter how they try, they say drink. It was in my council room, 1995. We finished a service like this. And a pastor was crying there. Not an MFM pastor. Crying bitterly. That, Let me see our daddy in the Lord. I must see our daddy in the Lord. When my staff considered the crying too heavy, my staff brought him in. He came. He looked at me. He broke down again. He said, Daddy in the Lord, you have talked to us today that a day will come when the bed will be too narrow and the blanket will be too short. He said, Sir, I feel as if I'm in heaven today. He said, But look at this. He put his hand in his pocket. He brought out cigarettes. He said, Sir, no matter what someone I hear, one hour after it, I'm smoking this cigarette. Pastor, that has become an iniquity. A sin that is committed over and over and over again until it becomes an habit is an iniquity. A sin that somebody is committing over and over and over again until you have lost control over it now is an iniquity. When we commit sin, a perversion is established within us. And when we keep doing it, keep doing it, that weakness, a bend towards that sin, is called iniquity. Iniquity is a strange thing. Because that iniquity, the bend towards sin, may be hereditary. And we may even pass it on to our own generation. You could pass iniquity to your children. That child may decide that I'm a child of God. I will not be an extension of the iniquity of my father's house. That child may decide. That woman may decide. I refuse to be an extension of the iniquity of my mother's house. The child may also decide to just follow it. Your father has married so many women. Now you have many girlfriends. Your mother was sleeping with men, even in your mother's house. And you are doing the same thing now. Your father's house. You are already going towards the tradition of iniquity. Find that your father has a terrible temper. And now you too find that any small thing you are gravitating, you lose your temper, you start shouting. There is... A river of iniquity flowing right down to you. If you don't cut it off, it will cut you off. Again, the principle is very clear. If you don't stop iniquity, iniquity will stop you. When the children refuses to break the iniquity of their father's house, the iniquity now becomes a stronghold operated by familiar spirits that follow a family down the generational line. And they will be opening doors for the enemy to be attacking you always. Maybe your father was a 419 prophet. And now you too, you are prophesying. You are giving false prophecy now. You can see that already. It has started. You grew up to, you know, to know your father as a lazy drunkard. And now you find your life too, not wanting to work hard. That is the strange power of iniquity. The Bible goes into extensive explanation to explain the power of iniquity to us. The captivating power of iniquity, the bewitching power of iniquity, the mesmerizing power of iniquity. 
the Bible explains this thoroughly for us. So sometimes when you see the preacher crying, crying, repent, 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 he's shouting, he's doing you good. Because he doesn't want the iniquity of your father's house to catch up with you. If I say I love you, and I see you walking towards a cliff, a cliff, and I know that at the end of that cliff, you will fall headlong and smash your head and die. If I say I love you, I won't be say, hello there, hello, uh, uh, that place you are going, it's not, it's not very safe. Hello, hello, hello. Be careful, be cautious. So, anybody who loves you will obey the Bible injunction. Who says, cry out, spare not. Person will shout, ah, come back, come back, come back. If he loves you. That's what the preacher does most times. To caution, to caution you and to let you know. And not last step forward may be the end of everything. Sin produces iniquity. In Leviticus chapter 5, verse 17, the strange power of iniquity. Sin produces iniquity. In Leviticus chapter 5, verse 17, Leviticus 5, 17 says, And if a soul sin and commit any of these things, which are forbidden to be done by the commandments of the Lord, though he wist it not, this you are not aware, this you are ignorant, yet is he guilty and shall bear his iniquity. Sin produces iniquity. Even if you are ignorant, you didn't know it's a sin, you will still bear that iniquity. That is one strange power of iniquity. Then iniquity can be passed down to the children, to the third and fourth generation. According to Exodus chapter 20, Exodus chapter 20, verse 5. Exodus 25. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So, iniquity has a mobile power. It moves. It can move up to the third and fourth generation. Meaning that certain things that you are struggling with now may be something that has been passed down to you 120 years ago, 100 years ago. The Bible also tells us that the children receive iniquity from their forefathers. According to Lamentation chapter 5, Lamentation chapter 5, verse 7, Lamentation 5, 7, the children can receive iniquity from their forefathers. Lamentation 5-7. It says this. Our fathers have sinned and are not. And we have born their iniquities. We have born their iniquities. From the deepest part of my heart. I'm praying for anybody here tonight. Who is suffering under a burden. Not because you did something wrong. But because your forefathers have prepared a platform of iniquity for you. And as a result of that, you are suffering. I'm praying for such people tonight that the good Lord, in his merciful hand, would deliver such people. He will be delivered. He will be delivered. In the name of Jesus. The Bible makes us to understand that the sins of the children can be traced back to their forefathers. In Isaiah chapter 1, verse 4. The sins of the children can be traced right back to their forefathers. Isaiah 1, 4. Say, ha, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors, they have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They have gone away backward. The sins of the children can be traced right back to their forefathers. The iniquities of forefathers 
can open the door for children to commit sin. Not only this, according to Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6, Isaiah 64, verse 6, iniquity can sweep somebody away like the wind. They can sweep somebody away like the wind. The person will just be destroyed suddenly, without any warning. Suddenly. In Isaiah 64, verse 6. Say, but we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness as a filthy rags, and we do all faith as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. Iniquity can take somebody away like the wind. Iniquity tends to increase from generation to generation. If a generation is an iniquity generation and they don't repent, by the time the next generation takes over, it will be worse. In Romans chapter 6, verse 19. Romans six nineteen, It says this. I speak after the man of man because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as you have yielded your members, servants to uncleanness, and to iniquity unto iniquity, from and to iniquity unto iniquity. That's what the Bible says. So iniquity tends to increase from generation to generation. That's why Jesus had to come to bear our iniquity. In Isaiah chapter fifty-three, verse five to five to six. Isaiah fifty-three, five to six. Jesus had to bear the penalty for our iniquities. What did he say in Isaiah 53? Verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his tribes we are healed. So Jesus had to bear the penalty of our iniquities. Because if he does not, we are in trouble. The Bible now says something very serious. In Matthew twenty four twelve, he said, "Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Many have become cold Christians because of iniquity. The strange power of iniquity keeps a man on the path of self destruction. The strange power of iniquity." in spite of their harmful and unprogressive effect of sin, the man will still continue with it. You aborted the first time. What is abortion? The man basically puts a knife in you and is scraping the baby out of the wall of your womb. So the baby is dying like this, as if it's, you are slaughtering chicken. You did that one. You cried. You are the one crying. Maybe you even saw the baby partially formed. But the same person who cried she goes ahead to sleep with the same man again and got pregnant again. Another abortion. The strange power of iniquity. As if glued by an invisible force and blinded and drunken. Whether we like it or not, we all fashion ourselves after something. You can fashion your life after heaven or after the earth. But you must fashion your life after something. I read a story in a magazine some time ago. A man who does cosmetics was confessing being a satanist. The man said many strange things. He said they use aborted babies for cosmetics. They use part of aborted babies for lipsticks. And since uh, our nation is a dumping ground for all kinds of things, many of our lipstick sisters may be licking the bones of dead babies and they are saying things are not working when you are licking the bones of the dead God is looking for children he's not looking for converts he wants children iniquity keeps committing sin in spite of the preacher shouting day and night sin is his transgression of the law iniquity is what just continues without stopping everyone is a murder one way or the other you either bring forth life or bring forth death. Everyone has a father within. That father is the old man or Adamic nature or Mr. Flesh. 
the old man will sleep with his wife, the soul of man, and begat sin. The development of iniquity is as mysterious as the development of a child in the womb. In Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 5, many of us here are praying for breakthroughs. And I tell you one secret. The God of MFM is the God of uncommon breakthroughs. But if you remain in your iniquity, you refuse to depart from the throne of iniquity. Calling upon the God of breakthrough is like a joke. Ecclesiastes 11, verse 5. Ecclesiastes 11, verse 5. There is an evil which I have seen under the sun as an error which proceeded from the ruler. Folly is set in great dignity and they sit in a low place. All this as a result of iniquity. A lot of people are glued. Young people, old people, a lot of people are glued, weighed down by iniquity. And they are now following the Lord afar off. Many are praying day and night. Oh God, when will you answer my prayer? Oh God, I've been coming to this church since this. I've been coming to that church since that. You say you've been coming to MFM for 10 years. You are still painting your lips. Wearing your dangerous chains. Putting marine paints on your nails. And attaching all kinds of dead women here on your ear. I submit to you that you are not a member yet. You are still an external person. If for 10 years, the words of God here does not change then there is iniquity in your camp. That is the truth. There is iniquity. There is a stubborn iniquity in your heart and one way or the other, you worship an idol in your spirit. I've been here for five years. You are still going to parties, you are drinking. My parents get back to me in this church and you are already sleeping around committing fornication. The meaning is that iniquity has captured you and you are not free yet. And I want you to understand it is not first come, first serve when it comes to the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said the first shall be the last. He said many will come unto me that day. He said we have Abraham as our father. He said how come these people are there? Jesus said they will be shocked because they will get to the kingdom of heaven and find former prostitute, former this, former that at the altar while they are thrown out. This is a serious matter. And I want you to understand this very, very well. The Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministry is not an entertainment center. If you want an entertainment church, go to somewhere else. This is not a place. We are not here to entertain people. There are entertainment churches all over where you can go and do anything you want to do. Here we prepare people for heaven. We prepare people for their breakthrough. We prepare people for the uncommon achievement of their destiny. We are not here to joke. It's serious business. When you are a sinner, you are actually wounding the heart of God. Your master, the devil, came at God's head, but was only able to bruise the feet. But when you are living in iniquity, you are doing worse than the devil. Because you are wounding his heart. You are wounding the heart of God. How you say, it's my leg, I can go to whatever I want. But it was the leg of Jesus that was nailed to the cross. It's my hand, I can do whatever I want. For it was his hand that was nailed to the cross, not your hands. There are members of MFM and there are members of MFM. The true members of MFM are the broken ones. The ones who practice holiness within and without. Not the ones who look for any small excuse to be committing sin. The devices of iniquity are many. Iniquity will present the golden cup, but it will hide the poison inside. It is that cup. You will look at it and say, what a beautiful cup. What a be- you didn't know that the drink is poison. Iniquity will present the sweet and enjoyable part of sin. It will hide the wrath and the mystery that is likely to follow. It was at a pastor's conference many years ago. This was actually 1976. A pastor's conference. All of a sudden, as we were about to break for is it dinner or whatever, a prophecy started. I have never had that kind of prophecy before. The person said, Thus said the Lord, right now, I command Pastor so so and so and Sister so so and so to step out and stand at the altar right now. They should go down 
If not, they will dry up and die where they are. He said, ha. Ah. The two of them came forward. They look unrelated, but they were at the front. The prophecy continued. 6th of June, also here. Then this is also time. It's also time. Both of you, you committed fornication through a false. In an open pastor's conference. The two of them broke down and started crying. The prophecy continued. Say, so you, the sister, you can go back. The greatest blame is on this man who is supposed to direct you correctly. Say, so, therefore, I command that when you pastors leave this place, this man alone must remain in this auditorium. And I will spend special mosquitoes to him to deal with him. And thereafter, other punishment will follow. I will knock off the oil from his head. Thus said the Lord. Nobody could eat again. Nobody. Eat what? Sin will present the sweet part. But it will not expose to you the repercussion of what will happen maybe 10 years time, 20 years time, 30 years time. Sin will show you the hook. But you won't see that hook. This is a worm on the hook you will see. Iniquity will hide the shame, the wrath, and the loss of paradise. We just show you the enjoyment. Beloved, be wise. So that you are not busy running after the worm. Remember the hook. The hook. The hook. They say, he who falls into a pit teaches others a lesson. But iniquity will see the pit and see somebody move ahead. Iniquity will tell the preacher. Say, preacher, don't make me feel guilty. I enjoy what I'm doing. I'm still very young. When I'm your age, I will change. There may not be another opportunity to change. The enemy may kill you before you repent. And then that's it. When somebody lacks control, it's a powerful certificate of hellfire. That's why we say iniquity is bitter sweet. What some people are eating now on earth, they would digest it in hellfire. Anybody who is stealing people's money, stealing people's things, what you are stealing is sawdust. Whether it's village money, national money, whatever money you are stealing, it is sawdust. The person who will go and digest it in hellfire if he doesn't repent. Adam's apple was bitter sweet. Esau's porridge was bitter sweet. After the evil meal has ended, then the time of reckoning comes in. You cannot have your dinner with the devil. And you want to have supper with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The worst businessman is not the person who lost all his business. The worst businessman is not the person the economic recession has swallowed. The worst businessman is the man who sold eternity for temporal enjoyment. Sold off and your eternity because of some five minutes enjoyment. If you pick one ant and you send that ant to the babbage and you ask the ant to be bringing the grain of sand of the babbage to the headquarters here, the time it will take the ant to go to the babbage and bring all the sand of the babbage to the headquarters here, one small ant trekking to babbage, bringing all the sand there here. The time it will take that ant to do that, eternity is longer than that. So why do you want to destroy your eternity with some strange thing you call enjoyment? Why? Iniquity has a bewitching power because it's a great deceiver and it gives Satan power over us. Iniquity gives Satan an advantage over us and allow him to lay claim upon our lives. A soul bewitched by iniquity will stand at the point of God's sword of judgment. He will refuse to bow. God will say, I'm going to strike, I'm going to wound you. He will say, let God cut my bone. I will continue. Tell the soul filled with iniquity that God will certainly kill you if you don't kill that iniquity. He will say, no. That wants to go ahead. I remember this day, the story of Theotimus. They told Theotimus, I said, Theotimus, except you stop drinking and immorality, you will lose your eyes. Theotimus said, then, farewell, sweet light. 
So he would rather lose his eyes than abandon the throne of iniquity. Listen carefully, beloved. When you coat a poisonous tablet in sweet honey, it does not remove the poison. You can describe your iniquity with any name. When you cover a bad egg with good flour and you call it scotch eggs, it does not remove the bad egg. A wolf does not cease to be a wolf because he's wearing sheep's clothing. The devil does not cease to become the devil because he appears like an angel of light. Till we have sinned, Satan is a parasite. But when we sin, he becomes a master. And this is why we are here tonight. The throne of iniquity has caged so many people. We need to confess our iniquities and the iniquities of our fathers. We need to ask God like the psalmist to wash our iniquities away and cleanse our sins. We need to ask God to blot out our iniquities like the psalmist prayed. We need the power of God to keep away from being dominated by iniquity. The first thing we need to do is to agree that there is a problem. A good hospital treatment starts with diagnosis. What is the problem? Brother and sister, iniquity is a serious problem in the house of God. And those of us who are still living in iniquity, we are reducing the power of God, we are diluting the anointing, we are not helping the camp of holiness. So tonight, we need to confess our sins and to repent. Then we need to cry to heavens that all the consequences of iniquity that is fighting our lives and the ladder of iniquity that has caused trouble for us that it should be taken off our lives. Lost, seduction, they are all handwriting of iniquity. No wonder the Bible calls it the mystery of iniquity. Jesus came and was manifested in the flesh. The creator was made a creature. A fantastic process of humiliation. It's like a man becoming an ant to minister to ant. Jesus, who is clothed in glory, now wore rags of flesh. He whose glory filled heavens and earth is now cradled in a manger. The God of Israel fled into Egypt to hide from a mere man. The God of circumcision was circumcised. The one who holds the earth and the fullness thereof now stood on the cross and said, I thirst. Give me something to drink. And they gave him vinegar. The God of all strength became weary. The God of life was put to death. He who said, I and my father are one. Now cried again, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? In his lifetime, he had nowhere to lay his head. In his death, nowhere to lay his body. The king of kings was now crowned with a crown of thorns. His holy ears was listening to the blasphemies of men. His face that was fairer than the face of the sons of men was spat on. The Bible says he gave his back to the smiters and his cheeks to those that pluck the air. The hands of power were nailed to the cross. He was beholding the sight of his brother, his mother and his disciples as he died. It came to a time the soul of the son of God was comfortless and forsaken. Why did this happen to him? Because of the power of iniquity. The power of iniquity. The power which keeps returning a sinner to sin. The greatest power of destruction. The power which classifies some sin as small, small sin. There is no small, small sin. There is nothing like I committed a lesser sin. No. These sins which we describe as small, they are brought upon men the great wrath of God. As a Christian, you should be ready to suffer the worst torment, the worst poverty, instead of committing the least sin. This is a serious matter. I want you to understand this very well. If you have time, sit down. Read the book of Numbers in the Bible. The book of Numbers is a record of a people to whom both roads were open. The higher road 
and the lower road. The lower parts and the higher parts. But they chose the lower one. Korah and his colleagues. They were both just, all of them were about 250 men. But by the time their iniquity took root, 14,953 people have their funeral because of their sins. God planned for the people of Israel to enter into their rest. But sins, iniquity, prevented them from getting his God was the one that called Saul. He called him miraculously, marvelously. But because of iniquity, the same God that called him now rejected him. Tonight, you and I have work to do here. Serious work to do. Rise up on your feet now. All eyes closed. It is time for you. If you are here today, you are not even born again. You have not surrendered your life to Jesus. You don't have time to waste. Wherever you are, just raise up your right hand so that I can pray with you. Father, I thank you for these ones. I pray that you keep them standing. Write their names in the book of life. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you were one of those who put up your hands, immediately we close. Just find a way to the altar here so that we can pray more with you. Everybody remain standing now and bow down your heads. Ask the Lord to forgive you of all the personal iniquities and the iniquities of your father's house. This is not a time to joke. If you, are, you now notice that the iniquity is even being transferred into your life, it is time for you to repent. We are here for serious business tonight. You cannot continue like this. Heaven is not happy. You can't continue like this. You need a change. Tell him to forgive you. Maybe you are secretly committing your own sin, believing that nobody sees you. Everyone sees you. He knows what you are doing. He understands. But you are the one deceiving yourself. Talk to the Lord now. Man, if you are that young lady here, the Spirit of God has just located you. You have just slept with a man who is old enough to be your father. But the truth is this. The man has gathered the rest of all the virtues you have. And you may die a pauper. Unless you repent. If you are that person, I see a way out for you tonight. Quickly find a way to the altar and be on your knees. So that we can pray with you and teach you what to do. In this unfortunate situation in which you have found yourself. But you have a choice to remain in your seat. Then your blood will no longer be on our heads. That young lady you are here. You have been committing iniquity to somebody as old as your father. Find a way quickly to this altar now. So that you can withdraw your virtues the man has captured from you. This is time to cry to the heavens. Time to cry to the heavens. And don't bother what's happening around you. Because if you keep quiet, those men in Samaria say, we do not well. We are going from Samaria to say, we do not well. If you keep quiet, with your voice roaring like fire and like thunder. Please, this is not a day to joke. This is not a prayer of fall down and die. With a voice roaring like thunder. Because this is the most destructive enemy of all. The power of iniquity. Can you shout this louder than anyone here? The power of iniquity assigned to destroy me. Can your voice roar like thunder? Is that the loudest you can shout this prayer? In the name of Jesus, it is time for you to cry to the heavens.
In Jesus name we pray. The real lady that the word of knowledge was talking about, you are still not out yet. I give you an opportunity to join them. You have been committing fornication with a man almost as old as your father. Find a way quickly to this altar. Because all your virtues have been picked up by this man. And you may die as a pauper. Find a way quickly to the altar now. And join the others here. It's because of you I stop the prayer. Thou power of iniquity. Assigned to terminate my destiny. Thou. In the name of Jesus. Let your voice roar like thunder. In Jesus' name we pray. Iniquity of my father's heart. Depart from my life. In the name of Jesus. Aha, Name we pray. Aha. We're getting somewhere tonight. Said the mystery of iniquity already works. Only it that let it will be let. I say power restraining iniquity. You will shout and call on O God of mercy. Have mercy on me. Can I hear you shouting the ass? Is that the loudest who can shout it? In the name of Jesus. Let him have mercy. Jesus name we pray
the most major prayer you need to pray here today. Let not anybody's voice overshadow your voice. Pray it from your heart. Say this loud and clear. Avoc caused by iniquity to my life. Can you say that loud and clear? Shout it again loud and clear. Clear the word in the name of Jesus. 